So here's a reminder of the amino acid structure. Remember, amino acids are monomers of proteins. And when we say monomer, we mean individual building blocks, the, uh, the small units that we can put together to make a larger molecule. So if you remember, there's an NH2 group at one end, which can be called either the amino or the amine group. There's a COOH group at the end here, which is called the carboxylic acid group or carboxyl group. And up at the top, we have um, a region which changes depending on the amino acid that we're looking at. If you remember, there are 20 different variations that can appear up at the top um, attached to this central carbon atom here. Now, if we want to make a protein, we need to join a chain of these amino acids together. And amino acids um, often join together in hundreds to make one particular protein. Now, this is how they join together. So, in an exam, you would be required to maybe draw this out. So, here's one amino acid on the left here, and here's another amino acid on the right. Now, if you have a look in the center here, the OH group from the carboxyl group of the first amino acid can join with a hydrogen from the amino or amine group of the second amino acid here um, to form water. So if we remove, remember water is H2O, so we've got two hydrogen atoms here and one oxygen. So we can remove these to form water. Okay. And what will happen is this carbon the carboxyl group here will form a covalent bond with the nitrogen on this second amino acid from the amino group. Now this whole process is called condensation, so the removal of water. Now there are three really important points that you should remember when we're talking about condensation. So first of all it involves the removal of water or one uh, water molecule per bond. Um, so involves the formation of a covalent bond and also the formation of a larger molecule. So if you imagine here, we have two smaller molecules, two amino acids, and we've shown that we're going to remove water. So if we form a bond between these two amino acids after the water has been removed, we'll form a larger molecule. Now, Depending on the biological molecule we're talking about, the covalent bond that's formed um, will be given a different name, and you need to learn these different names. So this is what's formed when two amino acids are joined together. The larger molecule is called a dipeptide, so di in biology means two, and the bond that's formed between the carbon atom here and the nitrogen after we removed water is called a peptide bond. So this is the covalent bond that's formed. And it's good practice to still highlight the groups that you can see. So we still have an NH2 group, an amino group at the end here. And right at the other end, we have the COOH carboxyl group. So if you can imagine another amino acid could join here and then another and then another within a chain of amino acids. <clears throat> you always have an amino group at one end and the carboxyl group at the other. And like I say, it's just good to get into the habit of highlighting all the groups. So I've highlighted the two R groups there as well. So this is the larger molecule that's formed, and what I've drawn here is just the generalized structures of the amino acids. So I haven't actually drawn any specific amino acids, I've just used um, the symbol R for rest of molecule, which as you know could be one of 20 different types. So here's an example of the dipeptide that would be formed if we actually joined the specific amino acid um, glycine with alanine. So if you remember, glycine has a hydrogen atom um, where the R group is placed, and alanine has a CH3 group. 
Now remember, you're not expected to be able to remember specific amino acids. If an exam question wanted you to join two specific amino acids together, well then they give you the table of R groups and would expect you to just copy it from the table. Or they'd give you the two separate amino acids and say, this is glycine, this is alanine, uh, draw the resulting molecule from uh, the condensation of these two molecules. Uh, so this is something that you would draw, but you're not expected to remember those specific R groups. Okay, now this can actually be uh, reversed by a process called hydrolysis. So if you imagine hydro means water and lysis means to split or to break. So breaking something or splitting something um, using water basically is what hydrolysis means. So here's our dipeptide, and this here is our peptide bond. If we were to add water this time, um, it would result in this bond breaking, and we would gain our two amino acids back again. And essentially, this is what happens during digestion. So these are the three points that you need to remember if a question is asking you um, to describe the basis of hydrolysis. So it's the addition of water the breaking of the covalent bond, and the formation of smaller molecules. So in this case, it was splitting up our um, dipeptide molecule into the two separate amino acids again. But you always must remember that you to know the names of these covalent bonds. So if the question specifically was asking you about proteins, you wouldn't say breaking of a covalent bond. You would say breaking of a peptide bond because you know the name of the bond uh, that's been referred to if you're talking about proteins. Likewise, you wouldn't say the formation of smaller molecules, you would say the formation of amino acids because you, you specifically know uh, the names of the actual molecules that, we'd, uh, that would be produced there. Okay. Now, thinking about proteins, um, they don't just exist as one amino acid or even two or three joined together. As I said, you would actually have a chain of a few hundred amino acids, which would make up what we call the primary structure of the protein. So if you imagine here, we have a chain of amino acids all joined together by peptide bonds uh, with various R groups. So the actual, what we call the primary structure of a protein is the actual unique sequence of amino acids that are joined together in what we call a polypeptide chain. So if you remember, we talked about two amino acids being joined together was for, uh, called a dipeptide, di meant two. And polypeptide, poly means many. So many amino acids joined in a chain gives us the, the primary structure of a protein. And it's this primary structure that then determines how the protein um, goes on to fold and coil into its specific 3D shape, which then determines its uh, eventual uh, function. And all of this is determined by the DNA code. So if you remember, DNA um, can be read in small sections called genes, and we have a, a general um, knowledge that one gene codes for one protein or one polypeptide. This is probably what you've heard at GCSE so far. So a chain of amino acids forms the primary structure of a protein, we know that these peptide bonds have been formed through condensation reactions and they can also be broken by hydrolysis reactions. And for your exam, you're expected to be able to draw a specific amino acid and show how that condensation and hydrolysis occurs between uh, the carboxyl group of one amino acid and the amino group of another.